Hey guys, Dave here from Easy Country Coconut Coconut Share. Well, you know, the weather's getting colder and we're cooler anyway, and I thought it would be a good time to cook up some cowboy stew. So I dug out the old hat, started up the old wood fire out there, and we're going to make some up, and I bet you any money this is going to be so, so good. So let's get started. So we'll quickly go through the ingredients here. So what we got are some potatoes, of course, some salt and pepper, uh, Italian seasoning, some cumin, some chili powder, uh, tomato paste, corn, tomatoes fresh from the garden, and we got some beef broth, pinto beans, kielbasa, that is really good, garlic, mixed veggies, onion, jalapeno peppers, and over here, some hamburger and some bacon, and of course, my cup of coffee. Cookie can't cook anything without coffee. All right, guys, I've got the old Dutch oven heated up here, so I'm going to go in with about five strips of bacon. And we're just going to cook this down a little bit until it gets on the semi crisp side. Bartha came from off the farm, ran right up, jumped in my arms. I said, you. Now our bacon is kind of fried up there a little bit. I'm going in with a small chopped onion and three cloves of garlic. We're just kind of stir and saute this until that wonderful aroma fills the air. Mm -mm, this is smelling so good with the bacon guys already. We haven't even started yet. Me today. Mother, you're the sweetest girl. Now I'm going in with a pound of medium ground beef. Just kind of break this up here a little bit, guys. Oh, already starting to smell and look good. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to use ground beef like you can use stewing beef. But I looked at stewing beef and it was like, you know, for a package of a pound, it was like 15 bucks. And I thought, no, I'm not going there. But it is cowboy stew. And remember, Cookie on the Trail, they used whatever was available. I mean, it wasn't always beef, although it was a cattle drive. You know, it wouldn't be very good to cut up the boss's cow and, and chow down on it. So they often used squirrel, possum, whatever they could find. So, you know, whatever meat you got kicking around. But stewing beef would be perfect, but so expensive. Well, the beef is cooking here, guys. I'm going to grab up a slab of, slab, but that was hard to get out, slab of kielbasa. And I'm just going to cut this up and then cube it into some chunks. Maybe something like that. So we've got some good chunks of kielbasa. Now, no means, guys, you have to use kielbasa, but it's a combination of uh, beef and pork, of a kind of like a Polish, well, similar to a Polish sausage, but it is so good, it adds that nice smoky flavor. So if you can afford it and you got it kicking around, go ahead and use some kielbasa, but you don't have to. And you know what? I think we can go ahead and throw that kielbasa in now. Oh, kabasa, kabasa. Everything is stir around here. I'm down to this world. I love you more than words could ever say. Every day. All right, guys, we is looking pretty good now. Beef is pretty well browned up. So now I'm going to go in with a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste. Now, again, this is optional, but maybe a little bit more, maybe two and a half. But it does thicken it up and makes it nice and rich. So just give this a stir around till that tomato paste coats everything. There's a new beginning. Life is just a game you're winning. Every time you look, an open door. Now, just look at this. Doesn't that tomato paste add a real nice touch to everything? Believe me, when I get that liquid and liquid in there, it's going to make it so nice. Mm -hmm. It's looking good right now. Next up, I'm going to crack open a jar of diced tomatoes I made fresh from the garden. Just look at these. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. Then a can of Italian tomatoes. Of course, this is from the store. But this is Italian tomatoes with garlic and herbs and a bit of spice in there. You, you know, you can just use regular, two cans of regular tomatoes, but these Italian are so nice. A can of sweet corn. Some mixed veggies, and these are just peas and carrots. 
and the frozen ones, which work absolutely fine. If you have fresh, you can use them too. Grab up some jalapeno peppers and throw those in just for some heat. Totally optional. I mean, add as few and as many as you like. We'll just give everything a stir around here. Oh, now this is looking stewy. So run right out, chase the sunlight, nothing left to do but to ride. Martha, you're the one my heart beats for. Well, the stew is simmering up there for a few minutes, guys. I'm going to peel up a couple of taters. And these are just, uh, just regular old baking potatoes. Now, something I wanted to mention, going back to the garlic and the onion, don't slice them too fine. Don't really chop them up because that flavor will just cook out of them. So that's what I find anyway, but it's up to you. Now, we'll just kind of slice these and we'll just cube them up here. Now, you might be saying, Dave, you could have sliced those potatoes beforehand. Why would you wait until now? Well, I was lonely and I needed somebody to slice potatoes with or dice potatoes with. But, you know, you can do that, too. Okie dokie, we're all cubed up, so let's throw these in. And you can add as many taters or as little as you want. Grab up the old spoon and we'll give everything a stir around here. Now, isn't this starting to look like stew, my friends? I think so, anyway. Martha, my darling, your name I keep calling. Heartaches forgotten. Now, I'm going to season things up with a bit of salt. A teaspoon or something like that. Some ground black pepper. And you know me, I'm a pepper lover, so I'm going to add quite a bit of this. A teaspoon or two of Italian seasoning. Now this is up to you, like I say, optional. About a teaspoon, good heaping teaspoon of chili powder. And I'm gonna throw in, I don't know, about half a teaspoon of cumin. Give everything the old stir rooney here. Now this is starting to look thick, guys. So now it's gonna be time for that beef broth. So I'm only gonna throw in about a cup here. Now I know I've got two cups, but I'm gonna start with a cup. And there are a couple of reasons, a couple of reasons why I'm just adding the cup. Number one, I want this stew the perfect texture. So when I go out in the fire pit and we're gonna let this simmer away for about 45 minutes, an hour, if it gets too thin, then I'll add a little more beef broth. And also we have the beans and we have the pinto beans to add yet. And these are, Fairly, they're a fairly fine texture and they're going to collapse. So I'm going to, I'm going to add these in 15 minutes just before the cook ends. So we'll do that outside, but still two things to add. So just hang on to that beef broth and then we'll just add that slowly if we need it. Okay, now I'm going to throw a lid on this and we're going to go out and put this on the fire pit. But I made a few modifications to my fire pit. So I'm just going to explain that and then we'll go out and throw this on. All right, guys, what I did quickly here to, to modify my fire pit, just to show you fast, the neighbor had an old pool and she was throwing it out. And I said, don't throw out that tubing. I can use it. So I took the tubing, I made a frame for my grill. Uh, then I had an old fence or a gate laying around. So I put the gate and put a, put a piece of the tubing in the ground, the gate on the tubing, welded everything together. And this just swings, this lickety split and you can even adjust it up or down. So I'm gonna be doing some cooking on this. Somebody's watching in the window. <laughs> Hi, Coke. Okay, guys, we got the old, the old fire going here. I got some good hot coals in there and got a flame going on. She's just a smoking. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my stew on. Oh, this is gonna be so good. And I do have to say, guys, if you got a fire pit and a grill, go ahead and cook this. Just about cook anything over because that smoke, I'm burning some uh, maple here, and that smoke is so good when it gets into any dish or any meat. There's a lot of smoke here right now, but you will not regret it if you got a fire pit. If you don't, stove is fine. When you lie with me, down in the holler, in mansion or squalor, Martha, where you are is where I'll be. Even comes to play a 
get down, give you weary legs to rest now. Moon is high. Okay, guys, we're about 15 minutes into this cook and we are looking pretty good. Just look at that simmering and bubbling and that steam coming off and that fire cracking. This is going to be so good. And while I'm sitting here waiting for the stew, guys, what do you think of my hat? Do you think I should wear this all the time? I kind of like it. Maybe I should move down to Southern Kentucky or something. I'd like that. Alrighty then. We're about half an hour in now and just bubbling away. So I'm going to go in with those pinto beans and my regular can of beans and molasses. And of course, give everything a stir around. Oh, wow. And the reason, guys, I put the beans with molasses in is simply because I want that bit of molasses, that sweetness in there. And I think this is going to be super good. And I don't think that we need any more broth in here. I think this is soupy enough for me. That's entirely up to you. But once this cooks off for another 15 minutes, it's going to be just perfecto, I think, anyway. Alrighty then, after 50 minutes to an hour, we are pretty much done. And just look at this, my friends. Oh, doggies, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. So much flavor in there. Not for long. I will write a song about you, how I could not live without... Okay, guys, we're back inside, so I'm going to pull the top off and look at this. So I'm going to grab some of this up. Ooh, doggies. And we are just going to ladle this into our bowl. Got to get some of those kielbasa or some of that kielbasa and potatoes. Jalapenos and corn and everything from the chuck wagon. Now, of course, I'm just to be all fancy. We don't do this at the chuck wagon usually, but I'm gonna garnish this up with some parsley fresh from the garden. Sometimes the old cookie just has to be fancy, you know. And there you have it, our super delicious cowboy stew that absolutely everybody, not even only on the range, but everybody in the neighborhood and the family is gonna love. Martha, my darling, your name I keep calling, Harvey. Okie dokie, let's grab some of this up. <laughs> and just look at that, we've got some kielbasa on there, and some tomatoes, and just about everything. Ooh, that looks good. All right, guys, down the old hatch. Mmm. There is a lot going on here. I can't even begin to describe it. It is so good. Now, some people are going to say it's just glorified chili. Don't even go there. It is so much more. First of all, you got the smoke from the fire pit, and I know everybody's not going to have that, so let's eliminate that. But the kielbasa is so good. The ground beef would be even better with stewing beef. Mm, the tomatoes, the seasoning, everything just blends together so perfect. You can freeze this up. You can leave it in the fridge. Mm, be fit for a week. You just got to make this, guys. It is so good. And if you do, leave, leave us a comment. Love to read them. Give us a like. Helps the channel out. Most of all, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. And, of course, I got to have more of this Cowboys stew fresh from the chuck wagon. Mm, so good. Where I'll be.